Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm willing to um, withhold final judgment, but I don't want this to pass without uh, at least being on record as having major concerns about the direction in which we're headed in Moscow. Uh, the termination of 41 employees has triggered a, uh, a firestorm of uh, negative publicity, which may be valid and may be <coughs> invalid, uh, but it is certainly there and certainly, at least by me, not anticipated. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if further personnel changes are planned, but uh, let me just express the hope that they're not planned. Uh, I think we've done enough. And uh, that's one of the reasons I've asked, uh, you know, uh, some of the people who were let go have been there 15, 20 years. Some may be elderly, some may be young. Um, I realize there are some that think that ir irrelevant, but I think it is relevant from the standpoint of, uh, of uh, the right thing to do. Anytime you terminate someone as mayor of the city of Knoxville, I had to do it on a few occasions. It's painful. Uh, it's not fun. Uh, you actually lose sleep, or at least uh, before it happens. Um, and what uh, th th this story has taken on legs of its own that frankly uh, totally surprised me. Um, I don't pretend to be a Russian expert. I think we need to get outside independent uh, views of the matter. Uh, and I, I have confidence the board is moving in that direction uh, to either verify or to uh, offer a different view. Uh, and I do not have the same enthusiasm for the direction in which we're headed in Moscow as Mr. Korn does at this time. Now, maybe a couple of months from now, I can say I was wrong, and uh, he was right. But I don't think the final returns are in. I don't think they're even remotely in. Um, Russia is a very difficult place. Uh, the Russian service, from what I've understood <coughs> by RFE in Moscow, has always had some level of difficulties uh, and has uh, not operated as well as we would hope. Part of that's the environment in which we live. When people say we acted according to Russian law in terms of termination, my initial thought is what a low bar that is. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to follow Russian election laws uh, as a model of democracy uh, in terms of Putin's Russia. It's simply an updated version of Stalin, in my view, uh, it, under a kinder and gentler uh, facade, but it's only a facade, not a reality. Uh, and Putin's Russia today is frankly a danger to democracy, a danger to the world. I suspect his ultimate motive is just to throw RFE totally out of Russia. He just did it to USAID. Uh, and I think it's only a matter of time uh, before we are effectively barred from being in Moscow in any way, and that we will have to regroup and reestablish ourselves outside the territorial limits of the Russian Federation. Um, I'd like to be wrong about that, but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but in terms of, uh, well, I respect everyone's uh, differing points of view. I think uh, th at least one board member has major concerns and misgivings about the way things are, are moving. Uh, I, I view it with great concern, and uh, I'd like to be wrong. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but no one, uh, but I think that people should know the board has had robust discussions internally about this and uh, and we move forward. It is now. <laughs> um, a question for both Steve and David Enser. Um, Governor Meehan and others and I were talking about this earlier, but uh, to the extent possible, if it is possible, uh, can you two or are you two collaborating on radio? Because we do still broadcast in Russia through VOA. And, you know, looking ahead, um, how much um, collaboration is there or could there be? Because I'm all for the, the digital outreach, as everyone knows. I'm a, I'm a strong proponent of it. Um, but to the extent not, uh, not at the expense of traditional media where possible. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if there's collaboration with VOA possible there. Yeah, well, first of all, as you know, um, VOA is moving into the new space we're building, so we're consolidating there. Um, as I understand it, David, correct me if I'm wrong, um, VOA's Russian programming consists of a, a brief period of time every day. Oh. RFERL is on uh, 13 hours a day. Um, furthermore, um, the reason they're still on is that they don't own the license, so 
that also means that somebody else owns the license and is programming that station the other 23 hours a day. So yeah, theoretically, if the owner of the station wants to put our programming on, I suppose that is, that is possible. I don't know that it's necessarily VOA's uh, uh, decision to make. I'm sure that they don't want to give up the, period, the time that they have now for their own programming. So, okay. No, that's right. We'll, we'll go on as long as we're able. As long as, as long as we have a partner who will put us on the air. I should mention we also have a partner in television, uh, DOSH TV, which visited us in, in, in the last week or so here in the Cohen building. And we've been doing some, uh, some reporting about the U.S. electoral process on, on their channel. So it, we, that and, and, and a strong digital presence also at VOA is very much there. And we look forward to working closely with, with RFE as... as uh, as Steve mentioned, um, our team's going to move in with theirs, and I imagine that will produce some synergies. I mean, uh, yes, it does. Um, Mr. Korn, 41 people were let go in Moscow. How many new people have been employed in Moscow? Since that time? Yes. Uh, last, uh, last count was 10. Ten. Yeah. We're looking to hire a few more. How many more, roughly? Another four or five. I'm not All sure right. the exact So a total number. maybe 15, 14, 15? Somewhere in that neighborhood, right. yes. And are any uh, terminations planned at Prague? Yes, they are. Can you give us an idea of how many? Don't know yet. It's a moving target, and um, it's it is evolving. More than five, less than twenty. I mean, more yes. than five and less than twenty. All right. I would urge you to to move with great caution and um, and um, take into account uh, years of service and. Uh, and um, do as little as you have to do. I agree with that. Uh, uh, the, the proposed cuts going forward, uh, what, what services are they in, and sort of what's the strategic thinking behind that? I'm sorry, I'm not. I the, don't the, you just said you plan to cut more, so. Oh, we're talking about Russia. Russia, all in Russia? Yes. Okay, thanks. That would be my hope. Um, maybe February is more realistic. Right. I realize that part of the world, it's problematic yeah. uh, on that. And a few uh, governors have been talking about uh, the benefit of taking a trip to Russia. Yes. Uh, perhaps in January to, we, to survey the situation. A good time to be in Russia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, one could accuse you of taking, no one could accuse you of a jacket. Uh, lovely and crisp at that time. Yeah, of very year, crisp. Having lived there. Um, yes, we are planning, um, as we've discussed, um, to have an event um, opening the, uh, the new facility in Russia. Probably not until the uh, back end of January. Um, we should be in before then, but uh, uh, Russia closes down the first two weeks in January um, for the holidays, and so we would probably be looking at the end of January. Hey, Steve, one suggestion before, on the Prague side. I think everybody would appreciate it if uh, once you do come to some conclusions as to what the reduction of forces of looks like, you, of you sort of make a presentation. To Absolutely. Them. And by the way, that is not a surprise to the people in Prague. I have told them that. They know it. And it's a credit to them that knowing that they continue to work wonderfully and have picked up the slack during the period of transition in, uh, in Moscow and have really been carrying the ball. Thank you. Any other comments?